Welcome to the Digital Business Evolution Podcast, a place that you can now call home. I know you're creating long lasting impact in this world, and you absolutely deserve the time, location, career, and financial freedom that you desire. I'm here to guide you with proven strategies, tools, and mindset hacks that I've taught to thousands of business owners. You'll also be hearing from exceptional guests sharing stories of their own personal and business evolution. My name is Jessica DeRose, and I'm here to teach you what I'm learning. We are all inherently worthy, regardless of the number of degrees, awards, and accolades that we've collected along the way. Grab a notebook, a coffee, and enjoy the show. Hey, I'm jumping in to tell you about our newest free tool, a tool that will change the way you approach your business. After working in digital marketing and the coaching space for nearly 10 years, working with thousands, scaling to multiple seven figures and helping our clients generate over $11 million in revenue, I've recognized a pattern from all of the most successful coaches and entrepreneurs. They all have an awareness that struggling business owners don't have. You see, they know their unique coaching superpower. After taking this quiz, you'll uncover which of the four superpowers runs through your DNA. This awareness will help you discover your personal strengths and blind spots so that you can succeed faster, make a bigger impact, and exponentially grow your income. To take this free quiz, just head on over to jessglazer.com slash quiz, and you'll be on your way to harnessing your superpower in minutes. Don't forget to share it and let me know which superpower you have. Tag me at I am Jessica DeRose. Today we're chatting all about how to determine whether or not you should be an online coach and what does it even mean to be a coach? What does it mean to step into the coaching industry and just offering you some tips and advice and three questions or three prompts that you can ask yourself if you're interested in becoming a coach. So right now it's July of 2022 and in my world, it feels like everybody's a coach, but that's because it is my world. And so oftentimes the stuff that we're surrounded by feels super saturated And there are a lot of people in the coaching industry. There are a lot of people utilizing social media for free marketing. There are a lot of people building their own businesses. And there were a lot of people over the last two years who were either forced or sort of backed into a corner of really needing to come up with different ideas on how they could create income to get a little gritty, to get a little creative and figure out how they could work from home. Or we know a lot of people were laid off and started working from home, or there were just a lot of movements and pivots that have happened over the past few years. So yes, the coaching industry, and I say that in quotes, is very busy. It's very saturated. And again, in my world, I feel like you can't scroll without seeing a coach. It's pretty much impossible to get on social media. I feel like if you could throw a rock, you could hit a coach. (laughs) Not that I want you to do that. But I get this question of a lot, a lot. That was hard to say. I get this question a lot. Should I be a coach? How do I determine if I should be a coach? Should I be online? Should I be in person? Should it be a blend? And so that's what we're going to talk about today. So of course, like always take what you want, leave the rest. I'm speaking from my own experience. I am not Webster's dictionary. Uh, however, I did look a couple of things up to make sure that I'm somewhat on point here, but I'm really speaking from my own personal experience. So to me, a coach is a leader. They're a leader internally. They're a leader externally. It's a person who is ready and willing to do the deep work on themselves, to expand their own beliefs, to shift their own beliefs, and to change the way that they show up in the world. It's someone who chooses to put themselves out there, maybe publicly making mistakes, publicly sharing their journey, teaching others through experience of what worked, what didn't work. And I believe a good coach walks the walk. I think a coach also holds space, creates containers where other people can evolve. Generally, a coach is some sort of a creative person who is, again, leading by example, leading by what they learn. So if you're wondering if you should be a coach or be an online coach, I'd love you to think about these three different questions. And we're going to dive right in today. So number one, as I always, always, always say, what is your intention? Start with the end in mind. So you might want to jot these things down. If you're driving a car, please don't jot down, but you can come back and, you know, rewind this episode or screen record, whatever that might be. Ask yourself these questions, starting with the end in mind. What is the reason for you wanting to be a coach or even pondering the idea of coaching? Without judgment, as we always say, is it for the impact? Are you someone who like myself, I was a teacher. I am a teacher. I was an elementary school teacher. I literally live for the impact. I love changing people's minds. I love changing people's 
lives. Growing up, I was a coach, a gymnastics coach for many, many years. I was a personal trainer, which is also a person who acts much like a coach. I was an elementary school teacher, which is similar to coaching, but a little bit different. And we'll talk about that today. So it's literally in my blood. I love to change people's minds. I love to shift perspective. I love to, I love, maybe this is you too. I love to get people to understand things that they don't understand. Like I'm obsessed with making not even difficult concepts easy to understand, but I'm just obsessed with making things digestible. If you've ever worked with me before or watched me in a training, I will pat myself on the back here and say, I'm generally pretty good at coming up with analogies on the fly. Like I am just obsessed with if someone isn't getting it, even if it's a simple thing, how else can I teach it? How else can I frame it? How else can I show them? How else can I try a different learning modality for that person? So are you wanting to become a coach because of the impact? Again, without judgment, ask yourself, is it for the income? There's nothing wrong with that. If you're interested to get into coaching, maybe you see people making a ton of money. Maybe you see people making some money and you're like, yeah, that could be really helpful in my life. Okay, cool. Move on. Ask yourself, is it because it looks easy? You know, this is something that really grinds my gears and I've talked about it a lot. It's not easy. Building a business is not easy. Being consistent and posting on social media is not easy. Putting yourself out there is not easy. Creating content is not easy. It's like anything. It takes work. It takes practice. It takes skill. It takes consistency. It takes time. So ask yourself, are you interested in getting into coaching because you think it looks easy? Again, without judgment, it's okay, but just kind of take a pulse there because there's so many things that go into it. Maybe it's because people are actually asking you for it. Maybe you're already coaching in another capacity. Maybe you are involved in network marketing and you're leading a team, or maybe you have a corporate job where you're leading a team, or maybe you have a nine to five job where you're already coaching or a side hustle where maybe you're coaching in person. And now you're just wondering, should I do this online as well? So number one is starting with the intention. What's the end, right? Start with the end in mind. What is your intention? Is it the impact? Is it the income? Is it clout? Is it authority? Is it credibility? Is it to be seen? Is it significance? And it's really important to not have judgment on yourself here so that you can truly be honest. Question number two of three that I want you to ask yourself is, what does coaching even mean to you? What do you think coaching is? Now, again, I said I didn't look this stuff up on Webster's Dictionary, but this is basically what I came up with. When I think of coach and the coaching industry, to me, it feels very much, July of 2022, like an umbrella term. People sort of throw a lot of different things into what coaching is. And so I broke it down to four other little smaller sub sub departments kind of of coaching that this makes sense in my brain. So when people throw around the word coaching, what I often hear and see and experience inside of coaching containers is actually four things, coaching, teaching, mentoring, and oftentimes therapy. So I want to break that down for you for a second. In my eyes, A coach is someone who is guiding you to your answer. They're asking you open-ended questions. They're encouraging self-discovery. They're giving you ideas, concepts, theories, and analogies that you can apply to other situations. These coaches are typically very future-focused, and their response to you is individually tailored. They're there to offer accountability and support. So to me, that's what a coach is. Now, inside of coaching programs, you also often get a teacher, and it could be the same person. So a teacher or someone who's teaching, their role really is to just deliver information. They ask more directive questions. They seek out specific answers based on their past learnings. The information is moderately tailored. It's typically very structured, and it's often easy to digest for different types of learners. So for me, in any one of the containers that I offer, I do both. I coach and I teach, which I think a lot of people do. When I look at a very standard high ticket group coaching program, I believe that a great group coaching program includes the teaching portion over in a portal somewhere, PDFs, a workbook, videos that the student can learn sort of at their own time or on their own time, I should say. And the coaching is what's happening on the calls. And this is where you're getting that feedback, that relationship building, that more one-on-one or one-on-many group experience of coaching. So that's a coach and a teacher. Then we have mentoring or mentorship. I feel that a mentor is really there more to inspire, motivate, 
to be aspirational. A mentor, while coaches and teachers also could be a sounding board, I feel that a mentor really is the sounding board. They're there to help you seek alternative answers, maybe alternative approaches, and they're utilizing resources that they're finding and they're simply sharing opinions. Now of these things, coach, teacher, mentor, you can technically have a coach or a teacher or a mentor that you don't even pay. But I find that mentorship is the bucket in which that typically falls. Meaning, how many times have you followed someone on social media that you feel connected to, that you're constantly learning from, you're always motivated and inspired by their information, you're always sharing their content or at least saving their content to circle back, but maybe you've actually never paid them. That is a really common relationship, even though it feels single-sided. That's a really common relationship for people to have with other people on social media. I know for me, I've had so many unpaid mentors over the years that some of them I eventually end up paying and I get into their containers and their rooms, but a lot of them I'm just following for free and I'm consuming their content for free. And so I find that coaching and teaching are going to be a little bit more hands-on. Mentoring can be hands-on, but it oftentimes is also at a distance. And then the fourth and final one that I think falls under the umbrella of coaching is a therapist or therapy. Now, of course, disclaimer, don't do things that are outside your legal scope of practice. I'm not a therapist, so I don't use any therapy tools. However, there are tools that I use that I am qualified to use and teach and share that therapists will also often use. So the line gets blurry. And this is where sometimes I believe it can be a really dangerous place for coaches Because I do see and I do believe that there are people speaking and teaching and coaching outside of their scope of practice, which could be dangerous. But a therapist, in my opinion, is someone with an unbiased view, which I also feel should be the same for a coach and a teacher and a mentor. But we don't always do that. We sometimes bring our own beliefs in. We we often bring our own beliefs in. And that's what's so special about working with a coach or a mentor. But a therapist is an unbiased view. It's an outside perspective. They're empathetic support and offering different tools and suggestions. Less guidance maybe than a coach. Definitely no answers like a teacher. And again, should be within their legal scope of practice. So for question number two, when you're asking yourself, what is coaching? I'd love you just to kind of take a pulse on What is coaching? What does it mean to you? What does it look like? Are you already doing it? And again, going back to the first question of what's your intention, start with the end in mind. Now, the third thing that I want you to ask yourself is, this isn't really a question, but know that there's clarity in contrast. So if you're asking yourself, should I be a coach? Should I get into the coaching industry? Well, honestly, the best answer, you won't know until you try. And I know that that's a sucky answer. And that's like, kind of feels like a cheap shot from me, but there's clarity in contrast. We learn what we like by trying. We learn what we lo- what we don't like by doing. It's kind of like feeding a kid a new food for the first time. You're not going to know if they like avocado until they try it. And in fact, you're going to probably want them to try it again a couple times as the years pass, continuing to try it. And we all know that our, our flavor palette and our taste can change over time. So there's clarity in contrast. And I want to be clear about something. I'm not throwing shade, but posting on social media doesn't make you a coach. Just like having a social media account doesn't make you a business owner. So like anything, if you're getting into coaching or you're getting into starting a business or you're learning how to play guitar, you're taking salsa lessons, it's going to take time to know if you like it or don't like it. It's going to take time for you to get good at it or for you to master it or feel comfortable with it. There's that famous quote they they say, whoever they are, if a flower doesn't bloom, do we blame it on the flower or do we change the environment? So if you're trying coaching, if you're dipping your toe in the water, if you're testing it out and it's not working or it's feeling a little uncomfortable, it's ultimately up to you to decide, are you going to scrap the whole thing or are you going to feel into it and make a couple little minor changes and tweaks to see how it might feel? But like I said, you're not going to know until you try. So there's clarity in contrast. Now, My last thought here is that so many of us want to be a leader. And again, just like having a social media account doesn't make you a business owner, posting doesn't make you a coach, saying what you feel or how you believe or what you learned doesn't necessarily make you a leader. Now, we're all influencers. Let me say that again. We are all influencers. So whether you have a social media account or you don't, 
Whether you have a ton of followers or you don't, whether you've gotten paid to work with brands or you haven't, you are still an influencer. We influence those around us. The way that you show up in the world, the questions that you ask, the attitude that you bring, the gratitude that you bring, the conversations that you have, the way you carry yourself through your every single day life, people are watching, people are learning from you, people are absorbing. And again, there's clarity and contrast. So those around you, friends, family, coworkers, they're seeing what they like and what they don't like. And this has nothing to do with how you are and if they like you, but they're looking at your traits and your characteristics and the way you carry yourself and you are influencing them. Heck, how many times have you eaten a food where someone looks at you in the room and they reach over and they want to taste it? They've never had those chips before. Hey, can I taste those Siete chips? I've heard so much about those. And you offer them one and they say, oh my gosh, these are delicious. I want to buy a bag. Well, you just influenced them to make that decision. We tell each other restaurants we love. We tell each other movies to go to. My goodness, we all share what we're binging on Netflix, right? And that's why things become popular. That's how it snowballs. And every single person watched Yellowstone. If you didn't watch it, you should go watch it. I'm not paid, (laughs) but it's a great show. But because so many people are sharing it with other people, not because they're getting paid, not because they're trying to build an influencer platform, they're just truly sharing things that they like they're influencing the decisions that other people around them are making. And so as a thought leader who happens to be a coach and a teacher and a mentor, I'm talking about myself right now, a thought leader, I happen to be a coach and a teacher and a mentor. It's my job to teach you how to think through my content. It's then your opportunity to come back to learn more. Let me say that again. If you want to be a thought leader, it's your job to teach the people around you how to think, and it is their opportunity or invitation to come back and learn more from you. Now, I'm going to put a bow on all of this and say, I just told you that I'm all three, a coach, a teacher, and a mentor, and there's a pretty good chance that you are as well. And there's a very good chance that there are some listeners that are also therapists. And that's incredible. We get to be all of those things, just like we get to be you know, mothers and daughters at the same time. We get to be husbands and brothers at the same time. We get to be parents and CEOs of companies at the same time. That's the duality. That's the human experience. So if you're wondering if you should get into the coaching space or if you should be an online coach, ask yourself these questions without judgment. What is your intention? Start with the end in mind. What is coaching to you and what would it look like if you were to step into that role? And then understand that there's clarity and contrast and you're really not going to know if you like it or if it's for you if you don't give it a shot and give it a valid, adequate length of time when you're giving it a shot. I hope you loved this episode. As always, please take a screenshot, tag me, let me know what your biggest takeaways were. Head over to the show notes for a breakdown of everything. And if you are not already a part of my text family, please, it would mean the world to me if you came and joined us. This is for people in the US. It's my favorite thing to do. Currently, every single Tuesday, I am coaching people completely for free. So if you have a question like this, like how can I determine if I should be a coach or what should I do with my social media? How do I do RV life? How do you work with your husband? Any type of question that you might have business, leadership, entrepreneurship, or just lifestyle related, you could shoot me a text at 973-358-7836. Again, that is 973-358-7836. And I will chat with you over there. As always, cheers to your evolution. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you loved this episode, I invite you to be a part of our ripple effect and share it with a friend. And please, if you feel called, take 30 seconds to leave a five-star review and I'll be forever grateful. Until next time, cheers to your evolution.